Welcome back. You're watching Storyboard and we are looking back at the year that was 2009. Santosh Desai is with us and we are now going to look at the most exciting advertising that we saw last year. Santosh, Telecom continued to raise the bar. I remember we closed the previous year by saying that they had completely taken over uh, the space that FMCG used to occupy in terms of uh, not just the spends, though spends still don't compare, but in terms of the kind of work they were doing in marketing. That's true. I think e telecom continues to rule continues the roost. to define. If you look at advertising, you close your eyes and think about advertising on television. Mm -hmm. Telecom is really what defines uh, your view. But I would say that you know the the year began uh, very interestingly. But through the course of the year, I I do believe that you know telecom is uh, the the advertising quality and and it's the consistency. Mm -hmm. I think it's beginning to lose its way. This is despite the fact that 2009 saw the launch of Vodafone Zuzu campaign. Yeah, this is because that's why I'm saying the early part of the year, hmm. the Zuzus were, were a breakthrough idea, both in terms of the idea itself as well as in terms of, of, of the media hmm. sort of uh, understanding. Uh, but but I think yeah the fact that you had an IPL that spread out over uh, two months and instead of doing one or two commercials you came out with over fif about fifteen that, which is a, mm. which, you know just to think that through mm. and then to produce the idea that you did with the quality that you did I mean it's an outstanding piece mm. uh, truly breakthrough I mean today because it is familiar retrospectively mm. you sometimes lose. Mm. Uh, the freshness that it brought, but it was a remarkably fresh, mm. new, uh, original idea. Mm. But over the course of the year, if you were to look at the major advertisers, they would have one or two great commercials, but they have just so much work. Mm. And there are, you know, and over a period of time, the, the question as to whether what what is the brand really about, mm. uh, I think it begs that question. And and I think that therefore, there is a degree of uh, you know indifference uh, and the quotient of indifferent uh, work. I think it is rising for our, uh, most brands mm. and I think uh, that's not very good news. What do you think of Ideas Talk for India campaign? I'm uh, uneasy about, about mm. uh, work of that kind and I, simply because you know that is uh, that the line between being exploitative and being sensitive is a thin one and when you exclusively create and then you don this very self-righteous ma uh, mantle. I mean, what gives you the right? I mean, what else have you done in this space? No, I actually there was someone who was speaking to me about it and he had a very interesting thought saying that, you know, nobody stops uh, the brand from, uh, you know, saying that, okay, we are going to give our revenues for that one hour to this cause. But why advertise it? Just send an SMS to all your subscribers and add the money you spend on advertising I mean, if it was just the cause. I think overall idea was a little disappointing for me uh, simply because they had momentum, but mm. the walk and talk thing, frankly, I think yeah, is, a, yeah. is making a mountain out of a, of a really yeah. small mountain. Yeah, it, it was really, uh, I mean, I've written about this on storyboard.in.com and it, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. I, I mean, I just, it's like silly that. and then you have this, mm. I mean, the executions mm. are complacent mm. and they're, they're annoying. I mean, mm. I find them aggravating. So You're seeing so much brand building work in a space where it seems that, that the service is a commodity, isn't it? I think I think that is a paradox in, in mm. a sense of, of uh, uh, for all these brands. But you know, number portability is mm. coming, mm. and therefore there is that anxiety that mm. if if you are only price determined, mm. then you know there there could be uh, you know you could end up losing a lot of your custom base. Mm. So there is a you know something on the horizon that that perhaps uh, determines some of this. But the other thing is that you know you what can you do to hang on to you you are generating a lot of surplus cash. So in a sense, it is also linked to the fact that you are generating money. You are creating huge revenue bases, and and in some ways, whether advertising is actually leading it, or is a form of tribute mm. uh, that you are offering to you know your mm. own uh, mm. size, mm. I think is a, is a good question because you know you don't really know what drives, mm. what is the cause and what is the effect here. Mm. Uh, so, but you have money, so I mean you know, so uh, if nothing else, it's insurance. Okay, let's go to FMCG, the the biggest spender still on mass media advertising. Uh, we saw the biggest advertiser in the country, Hindustan Unilever, do roadblocks on TV channels. They were splashed all over outdoor media. So, um, what's your take on uh, what they've been doing? I'm not a great, you know, fan of the roadblock as a strategy because to me, it, you know, the only person who understands that it's a roadblock is the advertiser, because <laughs> yes. nobody else is standing on all roads and you know, waiting to be blocked. You know, meaning so, you know, so to my mind, it has questionable value it, you know, it gets talked about etc so and maybe there is value in that uh, so but otherwise uh, Unilever advertising has been undistinguished uh, certainly I, there is nothing much to write home about in, in a, as, a, as if you were to look at it as a as a body of work uh, I'm sure you will find good work but but there isn't anything that suggests that as a company uh, there is an underlying uh, thread 
that unites the work that they are doing, mm. which is worth commenting upon. In the FMCG space, any advertising that stood out for you across categories? Little bits of pieces, bingo, there were one or two executions that were, that were uh, very good. But again, not lacking the consistency that they had in the earlier years. Uh, the launch of, I mean, uh, Saint as uh, mm. Juice as an advertising piece. Mm. I'm not sure that for the brand launch, that is necessarily a, mm. uh, a great launch, but... You I like the, 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 the commercial, commercial the way it looked, I thought was yeah. uh, that was spectacular. That's a creative, uh, yeah, yeah. creative land Asia and uh, Parley Agro. And, and I thought it just was a counterpoint uh, mm. to, you know, all the speed and the fact that this dizzying, hyper-stimulated kind of world of television that we live in, mm. it, it just came as a, uh, as a wonderful counterpoint to that. And the fact that advertising could speak in that language in, uh, today, I think was very refreshing. You know, we began by saying advertising had to be messages, then advertising had to become entertaining. Do you think advertising has made uh, that final crossover from being advertising to entertainment? Are people watching commercials and advertising for their entertainment value, you think? I think, I think because so. that was the big challenge for creative people, isn't it, over the last couple of years? No, I think that is, that is I think, well put. I think it is, it is from being entertaining mm. as being an attribute mm. of advertising to advertising virtually being, mm. belonging to the category of entertainment. Mm. So every brand is entertainment first and then the category it belongs to second, mm. particularly big brands. And, and I think this is a movement that is taking place from the advertiser's side, uh, much more necessarily than from the, the viewer's mm. side where you somehow, because the combination of celebrities having big budgets, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, they sort of seem to come together in, in creating mega cinematic productions. Mm -hmm. So I think it's almost as if you're creating one minute, two minute cinema. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and, and I see a, a sign of that being that, you know, you will see a lot of brands with very different mm -hmm. kind of creative units uh, as part of their uh, year's uh, repertoire of work. You look at an Airtel and you cannot recognize that, you know, it's the same brand. There are so many different executions. Look at Tata Sky. Similarly, you will find, uh, you know, a dizzying number of uh, executions. And therefore, the landscape for the brand becomes secondary. And the fact that each piece must, above all, entertain uh, somehow seems to perhaps be the, uh, the dominant motivation. So is that uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing or there are pros and cons to this approach when it comes to, to the brand in, with respect to the brand forget the consumer for the time being I think I think it it can turn out to be a good thing if, mm. if you actually your vision is to see yourself as an entertainment brand mm. and then whatever you do is consistent with that but if it is merely a, a, a sort of a default strategy that mm. that you are mm. uh, sort of putting into place uh, then I think you you end up uh, with having spent a lot of money and residually still not creating an asset, you know, in, in uh, the consumer's mind. So what is your brand at the end of this? Mm. So unless, then your imperative is to keep spending. Because what you're doing is you're sort of transfixing consumers mm. every time by some new act of yours, but leaving no residue uh, that is additive mm. behind. Mm. That's the fear. So you, if you, as long as you keep spending, you can play that game. Okay, and film stars, not a trend in 2009, they just continued uh, celebrities, not just film stars, cricketers. But there are new celebrities, you think, beyond uh, film stars and cricketers that we saw in 2009? I think, I think you're, we are, in, a, you know, we are uh, in an era where we are intent on manufacturing celebrities. Mm. In fact, the reality show is a way of producing cheap, mm. instant, mm. minor celebrities. Mm. But it, it, you know, we have a, therefore an inventory of celebrities that we, we can sort of manufacture. Everything more and more is being framed through celebrities, so I think we need we need a lot of celebrities. Where brands are concerned, not just brands, where news is concerned, when brands are concerned, where marketing programs are concerned. So I think uh, in a variety of ways, uh, without celebrity uh, framing, I think we find it difficult to believe that content can be interesting. So, so we should have had Amitabh Bachchan do this ad review, isn't it? Or Amir Khan <laughs> actually do this ad review? I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> So, but that is that is increasingly mm. what is happening. So, I mm. think that laziness is, is pervasive. So, I think it's time to, you know, say it. Your best, your fa best campaigns of the year and the worst campaigns of the year. I think the best was uh, Zuzu's. The Vodafone uh, Vodafone Zuzu's. Vodafone Zuzu's, okay. Zuzu's, I think without question. Max New York Life, I thought, uh, mm. did uh, body of mm. work. I think the great thing about it is in a space like insurance where you think you've, you know, seen and done it all. So many brands, 16, 17 brands competing. To find something fresh, new, and it's a brand landscape. It's not just disconnected pieces of work, which are all individually uh, entertaining. But there's actually a coherence uh, uh, to that brand, uh, which I thought was, was uh, very good. Okay, what really got your goat in 2009? Uh, I think there's one commercial which particularly gets my goat, actually, which is an 
Axis uh, Mutual Fund commercial, mm. which is about a bunch of uh, you know the, this family visiting their grandparents and a bunch of kids who whine about the fact that they don't have an AC and they don't have a cable yes. TV. Yes, yes, yes. And, and I cannot believe somebody could do that. Like that. I really cannot believe such an insensitive mm. and such a gross. I mean, it's a materialistic. These brats, you know, <laughs> who should be sort of, you know, given a very stern talking to. So that that's a very moralistic tone. It's but not a moralistic it? tone. I think even from a consumer perspective, mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to connect with consumers. Mm -hmm. How is this? Do you will you get consumers to nod and say, "You're right." You know, I must instantly go and buy. And what are you selling? A mutual fund. Mm -hmm. You know, in a time uh, which is the most uncertain kind of a, you know, it's hardly the most certain mm -hmm. of investments. So I just find that uh, the moral sort of uh, mm -hmm. dimension apart. I just not find doing it bad a service to the just, brand in I any case. And then of course you can always, when in doubt, you can always, you know, jump on the auto sector mm. because uh, they do spectacularly bad advertising. But I10, mm. I mean, is, is truly <laughs> operatic in its, you know, in its awfulness. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is, it is really, I mean, it, you know, the Shah Rukh Khan, mm. it's cringe-inducing of a kind, mm. uh, you know, I mean, the <laughs> dialogues there that I cannot possibly believe. I must talk about an honourable exception, hmm. you know, which on the good side, <laughs> which, which is? is the Maruti service ad, right. you know, which I thought yes. is, is classical benefit kind of advertising, but hmm. done very cleanly hmm. and and very well. Okay, let's take another commercial break. When we come back, we're going to look at political advertising and how it worked in 2009.